current Utah head coach, Kyle Whittingham, then defensive coordinator in 2003, joins the conversation right now. And, and for both of you guys, this was really a unique season. Number one, both of you guys interviewed to be head coach. Urban, you got the gig, and you didn't want to hire Mr. Whittingham over there initially, but everything changed over a meeting and a dinner, right? Yeah, everybody has a circle of trust and people that when you interview jobs, you're thinking about your career. I, I knew of Kyle Whittingham. I knew his father. Uh, obviously, in the football world, you had to know about the Whittingham family. Uh, I was at Colorado State, so I knew, I knew the defensive mentality, the toughness. But then uh, I had friends that I trust in the business say, you know, you have to move on and, and, and start fresh. First of all, there was a coach there named Ron McBride. Excellent coach, a great, great recruiter, and the players loved him. And then all of a sudden, you have a guy that interviewed with the job, Kyle Winningham. You need a fresh start, break clean, and, and bring your own program in there. But then I was ready to do that, and I met with Kyle and his wife and Shelly. And I, you know, the one thing I've been very fortunate is surround myself with big time people. And Kyle's as good a football coach as I've ever been around. I could tell that right away at dinner. And then, you know, I, I, I get paid to coach the offense and special teams. I'm going to hire the best defense coach I can get my hands on. And that was Kyle Winningham. Kyle, is that the way you saw the dinner go? Did you even think you were going to get hired, or was this a nice, polite dinner, and, and off you go from Salt Lake? Well, you know, it's uh, first of all, as you mentioned, I was a little bit disappointed because I hadn't got the job. Chris Hill <clears throat> that morning had told me that, hey, I need you to come over to the hotel and, and meet somebody. It's, a, it's the guy we just hired for the head coach. Didn't tell me a name or anything. And so I head over to the hotel and, and uh, sat down and visited with Urban and, and seemed to click right away. I mean, it seemed to be – uh, a lot of uh, common ground between the two of us. And then, like, like we mentioned, we ended up going out to dinner that night with the wives. And, and, uh, and I would felt very fortunate afterwards to be able to, to be retained. I mean, that's not the typical course of action. And Coach Meyer had a great, uh, you know, a very good defensive coordinator at Bowling Green. You know, he was there and could very easily have brought him with him and, and obviously knew of, uh, you know, other quality coaches throughout the country. So, so uh, being able to uh, stay on and be at a university that I'd been at for, what, 10 years prior, was uh, was great for me and great for my family, and I felt very fortunate to be able to do that. So, so Kyle, what were those first couple of days, that first training camp, working under Urban like? It was great. I mean, I we, like I said, we had a lot of philosophical uh, sameness, and and uh, you know had a lot of uh, the same ideas, and and felt the same way about uh, you know discipline, organization, and that type of thing. And so, to me, it was a great fit from the get go. There was no there was no uh, learning curve for me or or a transition period. I mean, I, I was, uh, you know, right in line with uh, what he believed and what he was preaching. And, and so it was very simple from, uh, from that standpoint. Urban, what jumps out at you for the early stages of that 03 campaign? I, I know there was that tight loss to A&M and then the switch at quarterback. Yeah, I think whenever you have a transition, like we mentioned earlier about a beloved coach that's gone and also a new staff, a new, the weight room needed to be redone. You know, and I'm not talking about the structure. I'm talking about the approach. I've always believed you win championships in February and March. And that's when I don't want to find out that a team's soft in October or someone will not function under pressure or give in to difficult circumstances. I want to find out well before that season. And so we put them through a lot of stuff. There's, there's stories they've probably gotten bigger than – they're like fish stories now. Uh, but stories about change, about the weight room and body, full body cramps, those are all true. Uh, but we found out what we had is a very good team, a very tough team, especially on defense. Offense, we weren't very tough. We had a long way to go. But defense kind of saved the way early in the game, and early in the year. And we go down to A&M, and uh, we're way behind. And we come screaming back. And Fred Elliott's our quarterback. We go for two-point conversion with four seconds left to tie the game in, in, at A&M, and we, and we don't hit it. He breaks his wrist, and a young, skinny quarterback by the name of Alex Smith gets ready four days later. That's what people don't realize. Four days later on ESPN national television, he's going to make his first start, college start, against a quarterback by the name of Aaron Rodgers. And uh, Alex wins that game. Did Alex win the game or, or did defense win the game, Kyle? <laughs> I think that was a combination. That was uh... – uh, I can't remember the exact score, 30-something, 20-something, but I know it came right down to the last series, and, and defensively we had to make a stop to uh, preserve the victory at the end. And, and so uh, I just remember that uh, I was real impressed with this kid named Aaron Rodgers. Like Coach said, he was actually had not started the game before, and they brought him in. I think it was the second quarter they brought him in the game, and I thought, wow, you know, this guy is, is special. 
and because uh, we had no tape on them, we didn't know you know anything about them. And uh, but it was it was a team effort that day for sure. And and uh, you know we had good production on O and just did enough on defense to get the victory. So Kyle, quick, what's quick, Stan? Quick, let me let me give you a quick story for uh, Kyle. Remember this. So at the end of the game, I'm I'm aggressive on offense and conservative on defense, and I go down to Kyle and, and we we're up. We score on a shovel pass, and uh, the place is going and it's the first sellout Utah's ever had. And I go down and it's fourth down and Aaron Rodgers. And so I, I kind of stick my nose in the defensive huddle. And I said, Kyle, let's play some coverage here. And he looks at me, he goes, that's what we're doing. It was like a cover two or whatever it was. And I walk away and I'm in my mind, if we get the ball back here, you know, how much time we got to kill. And all of a sudden someone says, Hey coach, they just called zero pressure, which is a all out blitz. And I was like, Whoa. And I start turning to go back down to Kyle and uh, the ball snapped and we sack him, fumble, we recover. And we've had a, we've had a good laugh over that the last 10, 12 years. Uh, why, why'd you make that decision, Kyle? Uh, you know, it was a gut feeling. How about that? Just a gut instinct. And, and I uh, wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but they came out in a personnel group that, that uh, was set up perfectly for that blitz. And uh, that was after me and Coach Meyer had talked. And so wanted to make sure that we put our kids in the best situation to succeed. And, and uh, fortunately, it turned out. All right, Urban, let's go. November 1st, 2003, you're heading to the heights of Colorado Springs to take on Air Force. I sense that game provided you a couple moments to, to kind of launch this Utah program. Well, it's, every program goes through momentum, real momentum shifts. And we just lost to New Mexico. And uh, we, you know, a lot of people are saying, here we go, here's Utah again. And, you know, they're starting to people question, you know, we didn't play well that day. And, and so we're getting ready to play a wishbone team, which is difficult enough. And then our defense coordinator, Kyle, obviously, uh, his legendary father, great college football coach, professional football coach, a guy that I admired, a guy that was known well throughout Utah and really the country, um, passes away early in the week. And it was awful. Uh, as you can imagine, our team went to the funeral down in Provo and, and coach Witt, you know, needed some day, uh, some time with his mom. And, you know, once it, you start to realize that we're going to uh, national television, Chris Spielman's going to call the game and I'm not going to have my defense coordinator against air force. One of the highly, I think they were ranked at the time and one of the best offenses in America, but we also know that, you know, family comes first and we had to get a private plane to fly him in, in the morning of the game. He basically didn't game plan all week. I think in his own mind he did because he coached against it. That's the way of what kind of coach he is. And uh, he shows up at the game, and I've never been more happy to see a football coach in my life. And we go out there, and, and we put it on early. They come back in the second half, and it's triple overtime. They score, we score, they score, we score. And triple overtime, uh, they score a touchdown. And uh, he goes for two because you have to in the third one. And to this day, we, Kyle and I believe that his father tripped him up. The quarterback – uh, ran triple option and was getting ready to jump in the end zone and he slipped. So we're down by six. We go in and uh, we're out. We don't have a tailback now. And, and I put Ben Mo, 250 pound tight end and tailback. We ran single wing offense, just pounding the ball at him. And uh, it gets to fourth and one. And I'm getting ready to call the first jump pass, I think ever in college football, because we practice it over and over again. And uh, the kid, uh, Ben Mo talks me into letting him run it one more time. We run it one more time. He scores. We call the jump pass. No one's near the guy. And we get a triple overtime uh, win for Kyle, his family. And a big uh, that, that really set the stage for the next uh, few games. We, we uh, Matter of fact, we didn't lose another game for the next year and a half. Kyle, what do you remember most from the turbulent issues of that week for you? Yeah, that was a tough week. Um, you know, it was uh, – you know, just as coach uh, outlined it, it was a it was a great game. I, I had not had the opportunity to be with the team until, uh, in fact, I think it was 45 minutes before kickoff when I finally got to the stadium. And uh, you know, it was just <laughs> surreal, almost surreal, and uh, the way that thing played out at the end, and and uh, just uh, you know, just a great feeling at the end after a after a really obviously uh, brutal week and 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 tough loss for me. For both you guys, I want to go back to that late November showdown, the Holy War, BYU, uh, the snow and the score line are two things, Kyle, that I think jump out to everybody. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, uh, you know, it wasn't a blizzard, but it was, it was cold and it was, it was snowing. And 
Uh, not a lot of offense that day. And, you know, as a defense coordinator, that's your dream game is a is a three nothing game. And and, uh, you know, it was uh, at their place and uh, we had uh, at that, you know, when we shut them out, they had had 300 and some odd games in a row of scoring, which was an NC to a record of a non shutout streak going on. So so to be able to I can't remember if that sealed the championship or if we had already won it uh, prior to that game. I can't remember the circumstances as far as that goes. But I know that being able to go down there and and win that game because that was a huge rivalry back then. I mean, it's still a rivalry, but but back then it was gigantic. And uh, you know, we've been playing good offense. We had scored forty plus points, thirty plus points, three or four games in a row prior to that game. And you know, but the conditions were just not conducive to uh, to a lot of offense that day. And, and being able to uh, come away with a three nothing victory and take that uh, record away from them, not away from them, put that streak to an end was uh, was a, a thrill for our defense. Another great story about that one that Kyle will remember that uh, that was the first offensive game that we were held to a touchdown since I was a head coach and I would, took that very personal. And uh, it was, uh, you know, six, seven inches of snow on the ground, the wind blowing, and we just kept running the quarterback, running the tailback. And uh, our defense stops on about the 20 yard line. And uh, there's, you know, all you got to do is kneel on the clock to win the game. And I said, the heck with this, man, we're going to go try to score a touchdown here. Kyle hears it. He comes running down the field and, uh, put, and once again, very respectfully, puts his arm around me and says, hey, kneel on the ball. And I, I said, screw that, man. We're going to score a touchdown here. We have to. And he goes, he goes, coach, kneel on the ball. It's over. It's over. And I, as bad as I wanted to go score, the right thing to do was, uh, and I, I listened to very few people in those kind of moments. And uh, we knelt on the ball and get out of there. I do remember that vividly, yes. <laughs> Coaches always talk about it's the players, it's the players. So Coach Whittingham, give me a player that was underrated, undervalued on that 03 team. Gosh, probably a couple of them. Uh, I think number one, Brandon Warfield, you know, to me, because we weren't throwing the ball all that great at that point in time. I think during the whole season, we averaged just over 200 yards a game throwing, which is, is pretty pedestrian. And so uh, I think Brandon Warfield, you know, was nearly a thousand yard back that season. And really was, uh, you know, we needed those tough yards. He was there to get it for us and, and uh, you know, move the chains. And, and just I thought he was a very underrated player. Uh, and then I would say Paris Warren, you know, a receiver that was just was a walk on uh, prior to Coach Meyer getting there. Uh, Coach ended up giving him a scholarship, but he made a bunch of big catches for us that year. I think he had 70 catches and then another 80 or 90 the next year. He was just, that was his junior season. So probably those two guys were the unsung heroes of, of that football team. Urban, same question. Yeah, I, I would say on defense, a guy named Josh Savage, Dave Revel, and Ray Holcraft. Those are, I keep going back to, I'm a big culture believer in culture and relationship between player and coaches. And it, the, the script was set to have a, a, a team that didn't believe in their coaching staff because we were so different than the previous staff, at least on offense and really overall. But uh, Ray Holcraft was a middle linebacker, who's the captain of the defense. A guy named Josh Savage was a great player at defensive end. And then Dave Rebel was a safety. Those guys were my captains. They were my leaders. I would meet with them multiple times a week just to get a pulse of the team. And if you don't have that as a coach, you're, you're a lot of times you'll say the wrong things, do the wrong things. But I, I really trust those three with uh, everything. I'm going to ask this question of both you guys. And, and Urban, you go first. Kyle, you can follow. So Urban, I know you collect your rings. You look at that 2003 ring. What does that say to you? Well, I, I, I see the first ever championship that I had as a head coach. You know, a lot of times we're all human. You question, can you really do this? And we were at Bowling Green, never won a championship. And I've always, you know, I, I believe that you play team sports for a lot of reasons. Number one, to win a championship together. And I always dreamed of having a ring. And uh, I'll, this one right here will never leave my side just because I'm so proud of it. How about this? University of Utah was, I think it was 56 or 60 years since the last championship they won. And Salt Lake City's better than that. Utah's better than that. So to be able to say that with Coach Winningham and an incredible group of players that said, you know what, we're going to go do this. And boy, did they. Yeah, as for me, uh, you know, I'm not really a ring guy. I don't even wear a wedding ring, but but uh, I got those rings in a, in a safe place. But but what, is, what it speaks to me is, is the as we talked about earlier, the relationship with the players. You know, you look at that ring and think about 2003 and the players that you dealt with and, the, and you got to coach and, and uh, interact with. And, 
And that's what it, it does for me is it invokes those memories of, of being around those guys. Cause it was a great group of guys. I mean, those guys were, were special. And of course the next year, 2004 was really, uh, you know, a highlight of in Utah football history. And, and so just to uh, be able to remember those guys, we had a young freshman named Eric Weddle on that football team. He wasn't really a, an impact player his freshman year. He had a, you know, he played a great role in special teams and, and did some, uh, you know, substitution stuff on defense, but, but just to be able to remember those guys, and uh, you know the opportunity to coach them and, and work with them each day, uh, just that's that's what it's all about for me is is the memories of those relationships with those particular players. Kyle, so much of the Utah attention goes to that 2004 campaign, but what did getting that ring in 2003 do for your program going forward to the next season? Well, it put us back on the map, and we hadn't done much of anything for for several years. I mean, we'd had a a good season in. Uh, trying to remember back. It was my first year there, 94. We had a good season. I think we were 10-2 and two and, and uh, got to a bowl game. But but there wasn't a lot of great success up to that point. We had had some good years, but nothing nothing to the, to the uh, level that we were able to rise to in 03 and then, of course, 04. So I think 03 really paved the way and, and set the stage for the, uh, for the 04 season and that 04 team. Hopefully the next time you two guys are face to face, it's on a tennis court and then going to the golf course. And right. it sounds like it's, it's going to be a push one for Kyle and one for urban. No, I'm, not giving, I'm not giving it yet. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here from game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings. We've got everything you need as a college football fan right here. College football on Fox.